My favorite part of the painting process would have to be the last part. It's that part where I put in all the details and you can really see all the hard work come together. My compositions generally from the onset, they're, they're pretty simple. And from far away, there's, I mean, generally you're just like, well, yes, that's a landscape. But what I love to do, and this really doesn't happen until the very end, is I love to load these things full of just tiny, intentional, intricate detail. And once you, once the viewer gets pulled into the piece, once you start really more closely inspecting these paintings, you're really going to start to see a lot of detail that is, is lost from you know the five foot mark or farther. And, and that's really where I have the most fun, is once all the, the work is done and, and the composition's laid out, everything's ready to go, it's really pulling this thing back together in the last, you know, five, ten percent of the piece. And it just, I don't know, it brings it to life. And, and to me, it totally changes in, in that last step. Even though the difference is subtle, it makes it. And, and that's really when I get the most excited and, and sometimes at the end of paintings you'll, you'll see me jumping up and down because I just get so excited that, that all this hard work has is, is finally come together in such a cool way. There are three main influences in my work. The first would have to be my childhood, growing up on a family farm in small town America obviously has influenced the content of my work. The second would have to be my three years teaching elementary school art. I absolutely loved being surrounded by the young creative minds of my students. And the third would have to be the artists who have come before me. Uh, Vincent Van Gogh, Thomas Hart Benton, Grant Wood. Uh, these guys greatly influenced my work uh, and especially in my watercolors. All three of these influences can readily be seen First, the content. Most of them are, are rural landscapes, obviously with a, a, a whimsical twist, but um, the rural influence is there. Uh, the second, uh, most of them are direct uh, appropriations of Van Gogh. I mean, the compositions themselves, uh, the, the angles, the lines, uh, they're derivative of his. Uh, the third, the, the bright, bold colors, the dynamic movement, and, and my favorite part, the fun, surprising elements. Uh, those are directly uh, influenced by my former students. One of the things I also do when I'm out here versus in the studio is uh, I like to find landscapes that have uh, a lot of subtle hills that converge into each other. I do that a lot in my work, so I, I always try to improve the way that I do that because my style, it's not realistic but it's not totally abstract at the same time. So the more convincing I can make these whimsical paintings feel real, uh, you know, the, the, the more successful they become. And, and one of the key things to really making that happen is ensuring that I'm out here in nature, sketching, painting, and observing. One of the features I like most about this pocket box has to be this removable dish right here. So you've got the six places where you can mix color, but you also have this big reservoir where, I mean, I put my water in there so I don't even have to bring a water dish out into the field. I just bring some water with me, pour it in there, and I'm good to go. This, this Van Gogh brand Cerulean has to be the best out of the two blue I have ever seen. I don't think I've painted a painting without it since discovering it. Absolutely in love. If you are not using this paint, 
yet, I would I would definitely recommend it.